Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I am here with Geeky Sparkles. Hello. And we're going to talk about the media. We're going to talk about Kotaku and we're going to talk about the new Zelda game. Uh, Kotaku is not getting a copy of the new Zelda game to review because they're blacklisted by Nintendo. Mm hmm. So, so, apparently. So, and it's not just Nintendo. According to Dr. Gamma on Twitter, Kotaku has been blacklisted by Bethesda, Ubisoft, and the Final Fantasy XIV team. Now, I know what the Final Fantasy XIV thing is about. They were beating the drum that Final Fantasy, uh, or yeah, Final Fantasy XIV uh, developer was kind of a racist and it's too white and all that stuff. And then, yeah, so they have made a lot of enemies over the years. And for this supposedly reputable video game news outlet to be banned to be blacklisted by Nintendo is pretty damn bad. Yep. Before we get into it any further, please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants. Guys, uh, Geeky will give you a woohoo if woo you subscribe. And she's gonna read the original tweet here from uh, American Truck Songs 9. Okay, so apparently yesterday, it's preview day for Zelda Tears of the Kingdom, a huge game I would love for Kotaku to be able to inform its millions of readers about firsthand. Bullshit, millions of readers. Bullshit. Unfortunately, Nintendo still has to blacklist it from advanced coverage, a move I would argue is both unprofessional and uh, coercive. Well, Kotaku knows a lot about unprofessionalism and being coercive, so they're experts on the subject. Yeah, so Kotaku, like, look, now I'm trying to figure out why exactly they're blacklisted. Uh, Lofty Pixels seems to think it's because they were telling people how to run Metroid Dread on an emulator. Oh. That's probably not gonna score any points no. uh, with Nintendo. Like you want free games from us, but we're gonna tell you, tell people how to get it for free. Well, okay, here's the thing too though. I know like Nintendo, um, they're talking about the the Mario, the new Mario movie that yeah. was out. And I know they were saying that actually a lot of the, the, the hate comments and the hate reviews from critics actually made their movie make more money. So I think part of it is like Kotaku is known for being a, a very spiteful bullshit site. <laughs> In yeah. my opinion. And I No, think, it's not an opinion. That's fact. That is fact. You look up <laughs> Kotaku in Wikipedia, it says bullshit, spiteful site. site. And they might just be like, you know, we're not even going to go there with them. Look what they did with the Harry Potter game. Look what they did with other things. Other people are blocking them. So maybe, maybe like they other like places like Kotaku do with a preemptive blockchain to make sure you block certain problematic games, they're just blocking problematic journalist sites. Kota Kotaku and Polygon, I would say Kotaku even more so than Polygon, is uh, one of the worst video game sites on the internet. They used to be somewhat reputable, but they've been infiltrated. Look, I'm going I'm to just spell it out. They have been corrupted, infiltrated with activists, including this Ian Walker. Ian Walker, and this is the guy that basically got Troy Levitt, the lead developer for mm -hmm. Hogwarts Legacy, canceled. This is the guy who wrote that bullshit PlayStation 5 review. I was going to say, wasn't Kotaku the site with the PlayStation 5 yeah, review? Yeah, where he goes on for the first couple paragraphs about the specs and then it degenerates into some like, I can't be happy with the state of the world and Trump and the... Oh, oh. Who did the one with the Xbox with the holes? That, I think it was Polygon. Okay, so Polygon. one of the two. I knew it was one they're, of the two. They're both basically cut from the same cloth. And I think, I think video game developers are realizing these sites are not your friends. They're your fucking enemies. Mm -hmm. These sites are anti-marketing. These sites are do not speak for gamers. These sites attack gamers. They attacked ga they attack game developers. They attacked uh video game personalities. They attacked they've attacked conventions before. They were attacking, you know, they were mad because conventions were making jokes at their expense. Everybody knows Kotaku and Polygon are effectively anti-gamer sites. Mm -hmm. But for the longest time, uh, they've had this huge voice for whatever reason. And I'm with you. I think... But did they, though? No, I don't think they ever did. <laughs> I'm like, did they, though? So we're going we're gonna to talk a little bit ab about this more because um, I read today earlier, and we're going to talk about Vice, too, because Vice has actually shut down Vice News tonight. And this is, uh, I think, the same program that did this hit piece on on manga that basically all manga was, was uh, pedo stuff, mm -hmm. you know? 
and uh, it was a stupid video. And if you watch the video, it's very clear that it was uh, very, edited to, to yeah, yeah, to make it as as uh, uh, clickbaity as possible. And it was like, oh my god, look at all! I'm surrounded by all this porn, but it's and blocked out, so you can't see that it actually was. The images porn. were blurred out, and a lot of it was just very middle of the road stuff, right? I mean, you know, yeah, is there some dicey content? Yeah, there is. You know, but they made it out like the entire industry is is that way. And and uh, then right at the end of the video, they were begging for money. Mm -hmm. So that explains what's going on here. But now I saw another article today uh, talking about a website. I can't remember which one it was, but it turned out that once they sold the site off, uh, the, the investors found out that the traffic was 75% less than they thought. We it wasn't see, organic. We see this a lot. Like, I know there have been sites that have been going up for sale. I'm not going to name names. But they were they were fattened up artificially to sell their, you know, tragic site to somebody else that would buy it because they didn't know that it was like that. We used to run into this with web comics all the time, too. Like, people would get so upset. I actually put a tweet about this earlier because this kind of stuff. People would get so upset. Because they'd be like, oh, so-and-so is so big, I'm never to catch up to them. But what they didn't realize was so-and-so was buying their traffic. Like, there's a lot of different things out there. You know, journalists do it, blogs do it. You know, um, I know there's channels on YouTube and different places that, that do it. That they just buy views. They buy subs. And um, if their site's been known for being scammy before, or it's somebody that you know has been scammy before, they're probably buying their stuff. Especially if other things don't line up. Like their, their subscriber numbers or different things don't line up. These outlets, you you know, were like that. Yeah, you see a lot of this with, um, I mean, we've seen it with a lot of websites where they actually put their, uh, you know, the tweets out there, links to their articles, and there's like very little interaction. I was thinking media. like Rolling Stone. Yes. We've talked about that before on here. Like you go and they have, oh, we have millions of followers, right? And then when you actually look at their, their interaction, like nobody's interacting with that. If you have millions of followers, a, a percentage of that is going to be expected to interact. I would expect thousands of interactions and they got like three. You know, these are things you can tell that someone isn't who they say they are. 2.2 million followers. This is Kotaku. They build up their following uh, during the heyday of Twitter when there were lots of uh, far left folks on Twitter mm -hmm. before the Elon days. And uh, that was only 15 minutes ago, but well, yeah, but still, like, here's one, yeah, here's hours ago, 90, 94, 94, 19. Okay, this is really curious. They are Waypoint was gone years ago, Waypoint got snapped years ago. Is this a new article or are they just regurgitating content? Um, 18 minutes ago, okay, you know why they're because this is Vice, they're talking about Vice. Oh, this will be a good segue. This would be a good segue into Vice. You know, the reason they're probably eulogizing Waypoint is because they're they, next. They're next. <laughs> no, they're next. Well, Kotaku like that is one next. Guy we just covered the other day. What was he, where was he from? That he was going about uni, oh, with PC, was it, was it one of the gaming sites or was it a gaming Oh, PC Mag, yeah. Yeah, but yeah. You, need, you need game journalists to tell you what to think. It's like, no, we don't. No, and, and these companies realize it. And I, honest to God, think Hogwarts Legacy was the straw that broke the camel's back or the hippogriff's back. I think what happened was game developers were so terrified of Kotaku and Polygon, and then they saw that it didn't matter how much Kotaku, Polygon, and the gamers screamed, people still bought the game, they stepped over them. But Troy Levitt got fired because mm -hmm. of Kotaku, and if I were Troy Levitt, and Troy, if you're listening, if I were you, I would look at my legal options Oh, okay. Because they made defamatory statements. They, they did, but it was so long ago, wasn't it? Uh, there's a statute of limitations on that stuff. If you can prove it, if you can prove it was defamatory. I don't know. I'm just saying. But if anything, he's been vindicated. You know, I think that this, you know, that that Kotaku is exactly because a lot of his videos were about the dishonest video game journalists. Yeah. Well, that's because the gamer game. You hate your anti SW, You hate women, right? Yeah. Um, I'm sorry. I was distracted by the little ghosties in the haunted house down the corner. It made me happy. <laughs> They had some cute art. But yeah, Waypoint got shut down a couple of years ago. Never heard of it. And, uh, no, <laughs> yeah, and, and that was kind of the, you know, one of the first blows. And we've seen so many other gaming websites get shut down over the last year or so. The reason that these gaming journos and these pop culture journos come after YouTubers so hard. Because they're eating their lunch? They're eating their lunch and they know they're done. This is the year that they're done. Um, let's talk about being done. Uh, Vice, they just ended their flagship show. They're, they're done. 
like they're saying online media is retreating. Vice was one of the biggest players. We saw BuzzFeed shut down BuzzFeed News. So what mm-hmm. happens is it's always a domino. So with the video game sites and Waypoint was one of the first ones to get shut down. And once one company sees that they can survive without their video game site or whatever, right. the, everybody why else are we shuts them down. For it? Well, yeah. I think BuzzFeed was a lot of the catalyst for a lot of this too because they went public and it failed miserably. And I think people questioned a lot of things after that, especially like numbers. And, you know, I think that this led to a lot of, of companies, you know, kind of getting going down. That and the fact that they keep shitting on their... The readers doesn't help either. But. Yeah. So they said, look, and I'll tell you, this is all this stuff is interconnected. Digital media companies are struggling as advertisers pull back from spending on. Which we've been in, telling you. Yeah. In an uncertain economy and their remaining dollars go mostly tech giants like Facebook and Google uh, and to direct sponsorships and to, uh, you know, video ads and, and all of that stuff. I, they said journalism is expensive and less profitable than other forms of online content, making the business an easy target for cost cutting. Also, I think companies are wising up that a lot of these venture capital backed blogs were cheating their traffic Mm -hmm. to get ad revenue. And they realized that like, shit, we're spending all this money on these banner ads on these websites and very few, it's like a phantom audience. Very few of these are legit. And there's this like, oh shit moment. Like, oh my God, we've been dumping how many millions of dollars a year into like Kotaku then to have them turn around and piss in your cornflakes on top Mm -hmm. of it. Like not only did we dump millions of like Nintendo's probably like we shoveled millions of dollars into your coffers over the years, Kotaku, but you're going to turn around and tell people how to steal our games and shit on our politics. I think think a lot of it is because other people have already not given them stuff and they're just trying to avoid a controversy because they were leading the charge on the, on the uh, Hogwarts legacy. And I don't know why they aren't giving them. There's probably is a reason. You might you might know and put it in the comments. But I could it just could be preemptive because they're like talk has been just causing so many people trouble, and everybody's not giving them review copies now because of their behavior. That they're just like I'm not even gonna yeah they go s- there. They said, well, maybe not your fault. Your outlet has talked about and told people in the article the pirate Metroid dread yeah, on day that's one. Not good. Uh, you also have had incorrect financial reports, though the former is probably what upset Nintendo the most. Yeah, um, that and I think they just realized they don't need them. Nintendo doesn't need you. Nintendo doesn't need E3. Nobody needs Kotaku. Nobody needs Polygon. Because Kotaku is still a thing. Yep. Pretty yeah, fun. it is. And they're they're still doing damage. The talk is unethical. It's a terrible. I love this unethical crap all the time. Right. That's why I thought it's so rich that they were talking about professionalism. Yeah. I thought that was funny. It is an anti-gamer site. So is Polygon. So are so many of them. And there are so many of them are going to get shut down because their corporate owners are going to be like, yeah, uh, you're not bringing enough to warrant the trouble that we have to go to to keep you online. Yeah, and people really the hate pissing them. and the moaning and the... <laughs> Yeah, people, and they're getting lots of likes and 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 views on their comments too. Um, they're getting more likes and views. These random YouTube or random uh, Twitter users. Some of them are YouTubers, I think. Uh, yeah, but these random users are getting more likes, upvotes, and retweets, dunking on Kotaku than Kotaku gets posting links to their articles. Yes. on an account with two point two million subscribers. And we pointed this out to you before. That right there is a red flag. Right there to me, like when I tell you, like don't get too worried about. If you think someone's lapping you, because I mean, unless it's somebody really reputable and you know that, that it's very unlikely that they're buying stuff like we don't do that. But um, we've been around people who got so upset. And when you start looking at there's like different warning signs and there's different metrics and things you can look at. And I used to track numbers all the time. And I could tell when someone was like, uh-huh, that's weird. And if you see something that doesn't add up, don't don't let it get you down because it's probably not real. Yeah, I think that there there has been a shell game that's been played with venture capital and with advertisers for mm-hmm. years and the, the jig is up man the cheat codes not working anymore no they if patched you busted it. doing it you, you know you could, yeah. you could lose your advertising you could lose a lot of stuff yeah so i think this is this is the end i mean if if kotaku can't get access to nintendo why do you exist Kotaku is garbage. Nintendo doesn't need help selling a Legend of Zelda game. They sell themselves. Absolutely. That's true. Yeah. I mean, that is very true. Yep. So there you go, guys. Uh, Kotaku can't even get Nintendo to pay attention to them. There's literally no point. And I think the reason they put this Waypoint article up is they know they're going to go the way of Waypoint. Yeah, it's so weird. Why now? It's been years since they got shut down. Right. 
because they know they're next. They know they're next. I mean, how do you explain to your boss? Hey, boss. Yeah, we couldn't review the uh, the new Nintendo game, that, uh, the new Zelda game that everybody's talking about because Nintendo won't give us a copy because we pissed them well, off. I'm sure the boss knows. The boss is probably the first one to find out they couldn't get a copy. Yeah. Yeah. So it's not going to go well. But the overlords that own the company, I mean, I'm sure they're they're like, wait, why aren't you covering this? Where Where's all the traffic from covering this game? Oh, we can't. But all of our competitors can't. Okay. Well, I'm sure they have already lost the Hogwarts Legacy traffic, yeah. so yeah. I'm sure they're not going to like it too much. Anyway, yeah. we're going to wrap this up. Good luck with that. Good luck with that. It's, it's all it's all imploding, guys. Everything it's it's all coming down. Oh, I keep seeing Jada Pinkett Smith here. Yeah, there's a reason. Uh, they, Facebook just canceled her her one like show, her podcast, or whatever it was, or her like whatever already? show. Already? Yeah, they apparently just canceled it. Oh wow! Now, see, I didn't, I didn't catch it. That it was Jada Pinkett Smith. It was the meta. It was the meta or something. Oh, okay. I, I thought it was that that chick from the Star Trek movie, the first one. But then I realized she died a long time ago. Oh, did she? Yeah. Oh. yeah. Veger. 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 Anyway, ready? To wrap this up. Yeah, there's a dirty joke in there somewhere. We're gonna wrap this yeah. up. Uh, please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants. Go out to clownfishtv.com. We are not Kotaku. That's gonna be our new tagline. Go to our websites because we're not Kotaku. There you go. All right, we're going to wrap it up. Yep. Bye. Bye. Help support the channel. Go to thereef.support and get early access to podcasts, videos, and other content. That's thereef.support.